did try to do that, try to be, because my father, it's not only me, like, I think the whole family, there's this presence, this void that's there. And when everyone comes into it, people always have, every, any male guy who comes outside of our family has to hear so much about my dad. You know, like, I'm not one of the people who contribute to that, but this guy felt so much pressure, so much weight, that he felt like, yo, let me play this role and try to be a father figure to these kids, you know, who lost their dad. And me and him fought, man. I completely rejected that. And I was like, bro, no thanks, bro. <laughs> like, dude, to relax, bro. <laughs> I'm not interested in that. Yeah. This is a mistake that stepfathers do, stepmothers do. They try to step in, trying to replace their mm. dad. And that's not their approach. No. Just come and do you. Allow me to brief my mom. Allow me to brief my dad. When the time comes, we just get it. Yeah. the generation of our parents where they differ from us our parents a lot of them i'll say more than 80 percent of them they started dating when they were young they, they got married when they were very young yeah. so it's easy for us to say you come to me but you don't know the battle that they're going through because they've lost a life partner someone who's been everything to them so they are trying to deal with themselves trying to pick themselves up like my dad was a big guy he loved to he was a big guy massive guy and i saw my dad just dropping like that you can see that these guys he cannot function i could see it i could see through it he can't function he's heartbroken he's trying to pick himself up he's trying to be strong for all these kids and the last thing you'd want is to go there trust me the, the last thing is to try to push those buttons because it will just turn into a whole mess and from my experience is allow them to breathe and when they do they'll always come around if you're not directly affected with it stay away mm. and that's that's the problem that i've seen with our culture where and, and and for me it was different because when my mom died my mom's family had nothing to do with us and we're so young you see it was my dad's family that had to step in and be there for us already these are some of the battles and my daddy has to deal with this has to say but i was married in your house you know like i did the right thing by you guys now you're shunning these kids what's there for me what's happening so learning to understand those people is very critical and i think for men it hits them hard because naturally we don't want to share about our feelings so in them also trying to swallow them and suppress them it's cancerous to them but with women it's different see women can go to their friends they can go to church they'll say it out they'll cry men doesn't even want to cry mm. so for me i think timing is everything you see uh, if you are mature enough and you're smart enough just leave them for a little bit well once they accept it for themselves they deal with it then now you can engage it because in as much as we are affected as the kids i believe for the parents 10 times more because imagine for a mom is thinking he's left me with all these kids this guy was not just my husband but he was the family breadwinner mm -hmm. and, and, and so many lives that we're looking up up to your family who were feeding from the source of his dad it becomes an issue so for, for me i think silence is concerning but it needs to be dealt with as well. I've been in those situations where I'm hurting. Like, trust me, when you are hurting, especially when it's to do with a parent, no one will understand you. It's just you. You are like in a in a ditch. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. It's a heavy ditch where whether you try to and the danger now is the thing with parent is it's not something that you can just go walk in the shop and replace so communication it, it still comes back to timing and, and and how you relate because not every parent to be honest not all fathers don't talk to their kids mm -hmm. so it also boils down to the kind of setup that you have at home you see some people die and straight away they, they they deal with it some people take time so it also comes back to the kind of family you are raised in the kind of people that who you are because to be honest age plays a role yeah, you see, yeah. that's like if your mom passes away and your sister is five years old, 
at most clueless. She would need to grow up and to understand my mom is no longer there. So it also depends with the time that she's passed away, the circumstances and what we are dealing with. You see, every situation is different. So at my age, if my dad is to get a call, he's gone. I'm going to deal with it differently as compared to when my mom died. I was young, I was clueless. I had to, when I get older, that's when I started to be like, oh, I need my mom. But you can function. So it depends with the age and timing, where you are as well in life. To say, it's going to take long, but me, I always say, it's up to you. If you need help, you're going to get off your ass and look for it. Because the problem is, the other person who's been like for for you, your mom, she was dealing with it ten times more than what he was going through. Mm-hmm. Because for you, you have just lost a voice. Yes. But for a mother, she's lost the father of her kids, the partner of her life, the breadwinner, a companionship, a best friend. Now, if your mother is going through stuff, you think she's gonna ring you? And no, she's lost the guy that. Anytime she pick up a call and say, oh, this is what's happening. So already she's in that position where she's vulnerable. And you should be the last person to bring more troubles. If anything, she'll be expecting you to be just as consistent and loving and not bring more drama. Mm -hmm. So that's where you realize there's always that sensitivity where she's already a ball of fire. Then you come and you're full of petrol. Imagine what will happen. She's already a ball of fire and you're full of petrol, you're yeah, raging as well. Nothing good is going to come out. But if we all settle down, we all back off for a little bit. For me, I'll say, give it six months. Give it six months to... I, I have a very close friend of mine who recently lost his mom. I, I can see through him. He's struggling, but he doesn't want to talk about it. So you can't push it. So it's you, you got to be smart because sometimes when you push it, People are people, and you'll be very surprised what they can do. So you, you just have to know the person. The best way to put it is know the, the person. When you know the person, it's easier to deal with them. Some people want to deal with it straight away. Some people are like a desk value when they're dealing with stuff. Some want to process it after a year. So it, it, we are all different. For me, it was convenient because this was uncharted territory. Yeah. And I think I, I, I can't speak for her. But I think for her, it was also uncharted tears. She's like, man, I don't know how to deal with this. Yeah. Am I just going to go to a you know, 16-year-old and be like, yeah, let's talk about your father's death. You know, yeah. it's, it's really hard. Yeah. It is really hard. And the fact that she never brought it up to me, I was just like, okay, cool. Yep. Because I don't want to talk about it. Because I didn't know what to say. I don't know. Yeah. You know? It's like, oh, no, I'll just stay away from it. Then we just continued as everything was normal until that. And, yeah. and, and you see the danger is, it comes back to what we are saying. Because we look at our parents and we think they're parents. Yes. It's like a little child. You, have you ever heard little kids going, my dad can carry a car. <laughs> but in reality, this guy can't even lift up his own cup of tea. <laughs> you see, but this is the perspective of a child who thinks my dad is everything. And parents know these things. That's why you see when kids get in trouble, the biggest people that cover up the wrong things are the parents. They perpetuate the bad behavior because all they want is to portray that I'm responsible to clean for your mess. I'm one. So it's very rare to see them coming down mm-hmm. to us because of that, because they want to uphold a certain image. We are here in the first world, we're having this conversation. But back home, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's nothing like that. Yeah. It, it, it's like, you know, the, do you know the thing that broke my heart the other day? I was on Twitter, and this person is going, mental health, chiwele, chema salad. Ah, man. People always die with the leg. You see, you see the danger is we are the ones who are having these conversations here. But back home, like for them, they just take like, oh, it just happened to us this time. Yep, scoot him over next day. You know what? It's like, me, I say these things openly, and I'm not shy about it. It's like when my mom died, I went for more than 20 years, never saw my grandma, my mom's mom. Mm. So, uh, in that scenario, you can you can imagine to say, 
she didn't even know us. I still remember the, the one time I had to go look for her. I was with my brother. Was when my mom died, and I was two months old. She couldn't even realize it. She couldn't. And it's unheard of. You see, and, and for me already, it was thing that I didn't want to deal with it because I was thinking, if your own daughter that you gave birth, you couldn't, you didn't want to go and look for her own children. What kind of a woman? Are you? But these are real Man. sensitive issues where I, I've seen till my brother now, he has nothing to do with these people. And I don't blame him. Mm. And, and and I know at one point in time, he's going to come down mm. and he's going to have to do it. This whole thing of now we talk about this matters here, we're hoping it actually reaches back home because we literally came from Africa, from Zim, from wherever we're from. We came from there with a lack of knowledge. And we came to a place in an environment that has taught us so many things to the point where we can't keep these things to ourselves. We have to share it. That's how we actually make a change and improve. It's like this saying that goes, the foolish are ones that collect the information and keep the resources to themselves so that they can see for a foreseeable future for themselves. But the strong are ones that take these resources and this knowledge, build a bridge and share it and make a difference in the world that they believe in. So this is where we get to see which type of people that we are. And the fact that we're doing this whole thing is we're trying to gather all these resources and the knowledge and everything that we have learned along the way put it together into a package a bundle and spread it around create as much awareness as we can and you just never know how many lives you can save out of this even if it's just one so i believe this platform if there's anyone out there that is listening it's important to gather everything that we learned on it can be from raising a child, going to school, or whatever topic we discuss on this. We should take it and spread it around and educate people because that way a lot of things can start getting resolved with these steps. And we can even get to a limit of whatever we can get. And some people can even carry it over. So the moment we just suffocate and be like, okay, this is what we get, we just talk about people here, then that's it. We're not doing any difference because people here already know about it. We always work into it, we always walk into it, we always see it in your day. But then we're also doing for those people that are not able to experience all these things that we're experiencing, all the resources, all the knowledge that they can take it and share it around. And that actually opens that. Because I'm pretty sure when everybody came to Australia, we didn't know that we're going to be able to be sitting here with mics and out all the camera. Then have to even work in shifts because <laughs> we are used to you just get a job, get stuck in that job for 20, 30, 40 years until yeah. you die. That's it. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure for a lot of people here that are doing many different jobs, many different skills are being learned. And with those skills, we just need to just transfer them to teach people out there that are not able to do these things and also have this conversation with some of the people back home who are not in this setup. And I always say, I'd rather have two eagles than 2,000 chickens. Mm. And breaking a mold is not something that's easy. Certainly. It, 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 it comes back. I, I always say to myself, success is deliberate. It doesn't matter what you do, success is deliberate. You went to uni, you deliberately applied. You deliberately made time to study. You deliberately applied for the job you're working for. You deliberately set your alarm to wake up in the morning mm -hmm. so if you feel you're in that situation this is my message to you that are back home in australia mm -hmm. if you feel like you're in a good space the first point of thing you should do is shun away from people that will judge you but look for help it doesn't hurt if, if you're really down there if you feel you're in the mud shun away from the people that will judge you but look for help you see, guys, this is what I'm going through. Because back home, people are still back home. Mental is real. Bitterness is real. Imagine in Zim. I, I know women that 
they get married, they lose their husband, and they'll never re get married because someone saw them talking to some man and she's a prostitute. All those mm -hmm. things. It's like a good example. Mm -hmm. Instead of, son, I saw those condoms under your pillow. What's going on? Let's have a conversation. Yeah. She already had a right. Maure or going crazy, my avenues and what, mm -hmm. which is wrong. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you know yourself more than anyone else and if you really feel that you need help don't be quiet look for help don't worry about culture don't worry about what people do or what people judge you that's like a person that dies of hunger i'll give you a perfect example mm. how would you feel after this conversation someone comes up to you and say do you know that kid guy he's gone for two weeks without eating food you're gonna be heartbroken because you think I was sitting with a dude yeah. talking and he never mentioned anything. Yeah. You see the danger yeah. now. And now it, it just doesn't just disappoint you, but it's going to affect you because mm -hmm. now you're going to start to think, so what's Keith's perspective about me if he can't come to me when he is in trouble like this to reach out? You see how bad it is. We could be sitting in this situation yeah. like this and I'm battling serious stuff and the next thing you hear, kid hung himself. Mm. He's gonna kill you 20, especially you who's sitting next yes, to me. Yes, yes. To say, I was with this guy mm. and he never mentioned anything. So you now see the danger where the primary purpose of this thing is not, we are not cool, we are not the smartest people, right. no. But right. we should drive an agenda of saying, guys, let's talk. Let's drive an agenda mm. of saying, guys, let's love each other. Mm. Because over and above, Love is a language that even the blind can see. You see, once we love people, people will come out. Because if I tell you right now, you decide to say, Mom, let's go talk about it. Because now you're mature, you're at a different level. Mm -hmm. She's going to engage you and she's going to tell you your real feelings and what she felt and the hassles that you've put her through. But if you try to do it when you're 16, she will mm -hmm. shut you down. No. She will shut you down. Yeah. Like don't yeah. So for me, I feel like the primary purpose we should drive is let's push love, let's push embracing people at a level where they are, and it's even important. Like for me, I, I had to learn to know that not everyone believes the same belief that I have, not everyone is at the same level that I am, and let's just stop judging people That's and true. let's love people. And it still goes with our parents because the advantage that we have is. We are different, we are a peculiar generation. We, we have an advantage of being exposed to all these things. But our parents were not. So instead of also judging them, we can also they embrace also them and try to understand them and implement new things to what they know. Because it's their joy for them to see us doing these things and speaking out. And they might be annoyed one or two times, but after a while, they will also reflect. They're just normal people. They always go back to the basics. Yeah. And, and for me, I've learned that everything that's done in love, even people try to resist or what, it will work. Yes. But if we apply ourselves like just trying to bang, 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 then people will just push us back. Yeah. But when they see our hearts and our stories, it's not, you're not being cool trying to come here to say, some point I hate and white yeah. people. Yeah. And and it's not who you are. No. You see, and for you speaking it out, it means you're free from it. Yes. So the beauty of us doing this, it means we are free from what we are talking about. So that's why we have the muscle to come and talk about it and to impress others. Yes. I I definitely I have no faith in the older generation. I don't think they'll change. <laughs> but I have noticed that my mom's parenting style did change with my siblings. Yeah. The communication definitely improved. But I know most moms are not going to be like that. And the conversations I have with her at my age now are way more open. Yeah. I can tell her anything. It's like next level. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I don't think she would talk to me like that if I was 16. Yeah. At all. Mm -hmm. At all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I personally am pessimistic about the whole Zimbabwe changing. But I do know you have to rely on this. Like this is it. You have to look for, seek for help outside yes. for, you know, other people, yeah, other than your family, mm -hmm. you know, because some people just think, oh, if I can't talk to my family, if I can't talk to my church, because some people have tried the church route, mm -hmm. and that's what I used to suggest, but then it turns into something else there, so I can't guarantee that church 
is also the best option because mm-hmm. they are nightmare stories i know where people reached out to their pastors then all of a sudden it leaks to the whole church and yeah. the people think oh i know pingo you know mm-hmm. so yeah man you just they are i know like some mental health institutions back home but it's just as a stigma around that like i will use those yeah, things okay. you know okay. we do. yeah we do, do, do you know what's funny mm-hmm. is um i still remember just before my grandmother passed away um i was jokingly with her and i said um i'm gonna marry a white girl and it made her day horrible oh because for her her memory of white oh, people oh, yeah. during the war times yes. yeah oh, yeah. You see? yeah and even my dad had a thing of no. but we had to have that conversation where i said yeah even the black community is not even two or three percent in australia what are you talking about exactly. uh, chances are high that um the port might lean into a different mm. culture and then it's only recent where he's just said uh now i expect but you see there's still that yeah yeah, yeah. 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 but yeah. there's yeah. always a bad yeah. 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 so 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 i also like you know embrace you at that level where it's not going to be a smooth sailing no but we just have to understand each other and just keep doing what we're doing you see some even some other young people might not even agree with what we are saying oh of course they, they, oh, they won't me, believe it's, it it's, so, it's one of those things i think like every time we i think i talked about this in the other segment where even when we put ideas and all that, some of it will just be like, no, you know, this thing, I don't know, I don't trust him, all that. But if yeah. we do something and it proves effective, even by just one person, yeah. Yeah. that's already our ticket in. We just have to just keep on doing it as long as we can.